Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Auto Transport Intel. It is noon. It is Friday, Central Time, and that means it's time for Cars on the Move, where we connect dealers, auctions, and carriers. We're going to be live with Ty in the transport parking lot. Uh, please do me a favor. Go ahead, and after you hit that like button, click that share button, click that copy button. It's right below the video. Do me a favor, text it, email it, share it on social media, say to somebody, hey, these guys are going to be live for the next 30 minutes. They're going to be live with Tim of Max Digital. This is our first Block of Melting Ice show uh, series. We're going to do it monthly. And also, if you have deep business questions, go to autotransportintel.com, click on sign up, and please do say hello in the live chat. We got Silvermint, got my ears on, 10 for good buddy. Thank you so much for saying hello and tuning in. Also, finest towing and recovery. What's up, John? Hello from New Jersey. Freaking cold. Yeah, dude, it is. It's pretty cold out there. It might be a little bit sunny in Kansas City, but I feel I think it's still a little bit cold. Without any further ado, let's go live with Ty in the transport parking lot. What's going on, Ty? What are we doing today? Uh, today we're going to have on Tim. He's a great guy with uh, Max Digital, but right now I'm just standing out in the transport parking lot uh, watching guys load cars and helping everybody at America's in Kansas City, America's Auto Auction. Right, America's Auto Auction, Kansas City. Now, it's windy. It's a little bit windy. Do you got that dead cat on the audio or? Uh... Yeah. All right, cool. What's that? That's, that's good. It's better. Yeah, no, better? It's, I can tell it's windy. Yeah. Is it cold? Not too bad. I mean, it's probably yeah. 40. I can handle that. What's that high rail in the back? Hey, what's that? Okay, but I guess there's a truck in front of the high rail. Is that right? Yeah, there's a high rail, yeah. That's a high rail. Can is you there, see it? I see the high rail, but is that in the background? Is there one in front of it? Oh, no. No, okay. Just one truck and trailer right now. Just one, huh? So not yeah, a lot going on. I've a bunch in and out of here all day. Oh, yeah? Because yeah. the sale was, when was the sale? Yesterday. Oh, the sale was yesterday. Okay. Thursday. So, if, you know, if you think about it, one of the things we try to try to educate people about is know where your auctions are. And usually the d day of the sale on your Thursday show, that's where you find all these guys posting um, cars. And then if you're at the sale the next day and you're standing in the transport parking lot like I am, this is where all the cars from the previous day go out. Got it? You know, um, what we should try to do sometime, maybe on a Thursday, while we're doing dispatching live, is you could you could be man on the street, be like, hey, are you going to put that on Central Dispatch? <laughs> yeah, I thought about that um, yesterday, actually. I thought that's what really would be fun, just kind of a surprise. Ty drops in on Sue's show. Yeah, we like it when you show up. So that, that could be really interesting. Yeah. Holler, I'm available. But anyway, it's a beautiful day. <clears throat> auction's great uh, i haven't had a chance to find out how the sale was yesterday i'm gonna guess probably 65 percent sale probably pretty close to a thousand cars which is pretty Something much like that. that's pretty much the average is that right seems to be but i still am uh saying hey dave i'm still oh. saying that the uh this is the guard shack smaller independent auctions are going to uh, they've got a great opportunity in 2021. That's just my own opinion. I can't prove it. Hybrid, right? Everything's hybrid now. Um, also, we got Outsider 2000. Hello from BCCG Enterprise LLC from Orlando. Thanks for saying hello. So we got a special. This is a, a special. Look at him go. Uh, we have a special installment today. So we're going to do something different. We're going to do, uh, yes, this is Cars on the Move. Yes, we're live with Ty in the transport parking lot. Uh, but this is going to be the first block of melting ice. Cars on the Move with the block of melting ice with Tim Scatellis. Now, what are we talking about? Um, let me put the, yeah, Max Digital. Put the logo on the screen there. So Mac, Tim is with Max Digital, and he's going to tell us, what they do and more about him, but we are we are we we say on cars on the move we're connecting dealers, auctions, and carriers. Well, we're about to prove that. 
Yeah, and when you bring Tim on, I, I got to show him something. Bring him on in here. He's going to be excited when he sees this, man. Yeah, I well, mean, whoa. <laughs> here we go. All right, so he should be coming in from the. He was in the uh, waiting room. Here he is. <laughs> hey, Tim, how are you doing? What's going on, fellas? What's happening? Hey. Welcome to Cars. This is your first time on Cars on the Move live on a Friday. Is that right? Oh, I love these hours much better than those late Tuesday nights. You guys <laughs> oh, ouch. <laughs> oh, take that. Hey, Tim, I got to show you something. I think you'll like this. Okay. Watch this. Here, we'll get this right. What is this oh. right here, Tim? Dang. The diamond plate. Oh, uh, ring the bell. And when they used, used to bring that when, when you sold the car. Sometimes you think it's if you're paying too much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, I'm excited because I think if you and I have had a couple conversations, you know where I'm at, right? Yeah. I'm at the auction. This yeah, is so a great place to hang out, isn't it? What's the plan for uh, running cars live there? Are they running? Oh, yeah. Oh, Every okay. Thursday. Every Thursday. They're blowing them out. Good. That's Big good time. Yeah. Great auction. Into, you, you know which one this one is. This is the, used to be the old KCI. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you bought there. a lot of cars out of here, right? It wasn't as, wasn't that clean and pretty back when I used to go, but they didn't have those. Yeah. I guess they didn't have those yellow and red pillars either. You just <clears throat> walk at your own risk. Yeah, they've really done a great job. They've built this auction up, and I think they're going to really turn it up even more this year. I'm excited. So, what do you do again? I forgot. Oh, so hey, Tim Scott was from Max Digital. Um, I live in Wilmington, North Carolina. I am um, the director of strategic accounts for Max Digital. I work with our largest customers. Um, I make sure that they optimize our software. Um, car dealers. We're talking um, the Hendrick Automotive Groups, the Penske Automotive Groups, the Lithias, the uh, Luthers, the Herb Chambers. You know, they, they use a system, our system really, really well to help appraise, purchase, um, you know, merchandise, stock their lots. But I make sure that they, they optimize the software. We give them all the data. Let's make sure they stay between the lines and, and get the most out of the tool. Wow. That's a lot, really. Yeah. I mean, I mean, like, okay, optimize and getting inventory, different things like that. So what if like what's one of the favorite parts of this big thing that you're talking about for you yeah, so, personally? Yeah, so I, I like to tell them, like, listen, it's my job to help drive sweet spot sales. And you're probably like, well, what are sweet spot sales? Um, um, I've got some information that I can share with you today that I'll, that'll show, show you right off the bat. When a dealer sells a car quick, that's when he makes the most money. So it's their job to, you know, optimize their process, um, optimize, you know, what everything that's going on in the dealership to make sure they're selling cars quickly. So um, that's, that's what I try and do. And the, and the auction is absolutely, you know, essential to their success in doing that. Well, and another thing, um, occasionally I'll take a I find guys, different guys that are car sales guys, and they've maybe, maybe turned into coaching consulting guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always take whatever they've posted and I say, without this guy, we don't have a job. Right. The sales guy. And so then it kind of shifts just a little bit back. That guy doesn't have a job unless he has what? Something to sell. Inventory. You can't sell, you know, an empty parking spot. <laughs> right. Okay. So I'm thankful for the sales guy because he sells cars and that enables me to go get more cars. <clears throat> You're thankful for the sales guy, but really you, you need to get him something to do. So this is where this sweet spot, I think, kind of starts to come together. Is that fair? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, listen. Um, there's, it's, yes, it's about having the right car at the right price, but there's a lot of other things that go into selling cars efficiently for, for good profit. Um, it's not just, you know, I use this a lot. Grant Cardone said price is the easy part. There's plenty of tools out there, plenty of tools and data out there that'll tell us what to price the car for. Um, there's a lot of things that have to happen to, 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 to optimize it. Right. And finding the car. I mean, what was it? It wasn't less than, what, six months ago? Finding a car was pretty difficult. Challenge, yeah. right? I mean, I, I imagine it's still difficult today. The guys I'm talking to, um, they're out there trying to buy. I know sale rates are up. I know if you've been talking to Paul from Black Book, he'll probably tell you they've been on the rise. It seems like you know. Um, I think, uh, you know, we're when the weather cra cracks, 
and um, we all get a little relief from from these masks and things we got to do. I think we're gonna we're gonna see a little bit of bounce back. Oh yeah, that's what I'm feeling for sure. Yeah, yeah. pent up. They call it pent up demand for sure. There's <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of money on the sidelines, you know. Speaking but, of, I've heard. Are we about done yet? I got to get back to my GameStop. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it's up again today. What's up with that? Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw that in. I've I've been tracking this whole story. It's, it's Jay's quite probably over there now hitting the button. Yeah. Come on, Jay. Man, I tell you, Jay? you know what? And man, I love you guys are doing awesome. I'm trying to figure I don't I, I actually don't understand what's going on with GameStop. And I I can't be alone. What is going on? I mean, well, in a I, nutshell, <laughs> is it, can you put it in a nutshell? Um think, we'll get back to cars in a second, but really, I'm what's a, going on? Amateurs are, are uh, gaming the system. They, they see the short positions from the big establishment, the hedge funds, and they're just throwing a ton of money at this stock and driving it up and making them buy back their shorts. It's just a game. Right? Am I about right, Ty, on that? Yeah, okay. yeah I think and you I, did good. I, I, yeah. And, I, and I'll recommend, <laughs> as a footnote, uh, watch The Big Short. Oh, yeah. That movie is amazing. Mm -hmm. So do that. When you get to the truck stop tonight, the big short. Good flick. Yeah, or uh, or Boiler Room. Boiler Room was good, too. Mm, I don't think I've seen that. Oh, my God. I didn't see The Boiler Room? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm going to watch that. Who's Write the, it down. The Boiler Room? Yeah. All right. Cool. And ben Affleck. Oh, okay. I've seen parts of that. Okay. Yeah. Good that is actually that. And then, of course, Wolf of Wall Street. So, the, the king. You it, know. It, it is what you got to do. <laughs> Put the kids Weekend to Weekend homework. <laughs> yeah, that's some good weekend homework. All right, so um, I was saying this to Ty. All right, here, you want a hot potato? And, and the, what we'll do is I got a hot potato, or you can do your screen share. Why don't you do your screen share first? All right. Tell us so, more about, yeah, what do you want to tell us? Well, I got I get a lot of credit around the um, around this channel for this block of melting ice, and I... Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate that. But I wanted to... Um, it kind of just quickly elaborate on it. Um, ultimately, you know, what is that? Like, what are we trying to, to prove or, or what's the goal there? So I'll, um, you know, I talked about sweet spot sales. That's my job for dealers. I help them drive sweet spot sales. And I'm going to throw out a number. It's $66. And you're probably like, all right, what's that? A, my bar tab, my, you know, my, my dinner this, this, this week with my buddy. No, that's how much it costs the average dealer right now to keep a used car on their lot, right? Whether they sell it or not. And that, that adds up. Um, so it's, um, it's my, I feel it's like it's my job to help them minimize the time on it takes to sell that car, right? To, to sell that car, to drive it. So, you know, we only kept it for 10 days, right? 660 bucks. If it kept them 20 days or 30 days and you'll hear dealers say, I've had that car for a hundred days. Imagine owning it for 100 days and it costing you $66 a day. <laughs> right? It can get really expensive. Wow. So, <clears throat> this graph here that I share um, with my dealers, you know, we have the ability to run this for dealers. So I just took an average. This is a Honda store. It sells, um, you know, about 110 cars, 120 cars a month used. But what I want you guys to see is when they, when they sell cars in this sweet spot here, right? They're ge generating about $1,700 a car. The green bar graph here shows, you know, what percentage of their monthly profit that is. And you'll notice it's, it's 115%. So they'll make more money on their cars in the sweet spot than they will all month. Because what happens is, right, you'll notice this green bar goes down and it goes to negative, right? On wow. cars plus 60. And then if they sell any car wholesale past day 30, we give it back. Wow. Right. So you can see like this is the melting block of ice. <laughs> that I, that it really I talk is, about. man. Yeah. <clears throat> um, what sorts of things drive sweet spot sales? It's getting the cars online. So I started by saying it, you know, price is the easy part. Uh-huh. But it's it's you guys on this channel that you know receive those phone calls, texts, emails, whatever from your from your buyers or from the dealers you're talking to that I need to get that car back here because it's sitting on your truck. What they're saying is it's sitting on your truck costing me $66 a day and I got to pay you. Right. You know, so there's a bunch of other things that 
that I work with dealers to, you know, help make sure that they're getting the most out of driving those sweet spot sales. And, and, and there's a quick list, but you could see how these things are melting blocks of ice and it costs them money. The ice is that money. Um, and it just, that, that <clears throat> water gets, gets, gets up over their head and they're in trouble. So what well, do you think, funny, it's, it's interesting because Jay and I were actually having this conversation. There's a lot <clears throat> in our little world of YouTube. There's a lot of guys that are hotshot guys and they're, you know, whatever that means. Jay, what, what do you say that, what that mean? So it is interesting. A hot shot is a general term for fast moving freight, cars, paper, anything expedited and usually a shorter distance. That's what hot shot is defined as. Yeah. And yeah, we're getting into so, melting ice. Right. And one of the things that, uh, that I, I, cause you watch these guys and, and a lot of this stuff on YouTube is what we call clickbait. So, you know, how to get rich and hot shot or whatever the case may be. And I, I think there's a clear in my, in my mind, in the way I built my business, there's a, there's a difference. And it's, I, I like to call it expedited, which in my opinion ties in well with what you're saying, meaning <clears throat> that dealer wants his car for a reason <clears throat> as a carrier, it might make your life easier if you understand some of the reasons they might want that car right now and why maybe there's a voice change, like I really thought you were going to be here two hours ago kind of deal, right? And I, I've dealt with a lot of car haulers, drivers. I've had a fleet of 20 trucks, and I, I get it. You know, why are we always in a hurry? Why can't we just wait here and maybe get some more cars to go up there, and then we can pick those up and bring them back? That makes more sense, doesn't it, Ty? Well, it does maybe from a logistical dollar per mile perspective, but I'm a customer service guy. I'm providing a service and my customer wants his stuff. And this is where this is where I really enjoy having this relationship with Tim is because <clears throat> I always use the word interest. He uses the block of ice. I love the block of ice because it, it really gives that visualization of what we're trying to accomplish as a carrier. And Jay's show, Jay, you know, Jay's put a lot of time and a lot of years into putting this platform together so that we don't have a bunch of guys out here running around making car dealers mad all the time. And it happens all the time. And I think the more we, we see this conversation unfold, I think we're going to see there, you know, everybody's got their share of, man, you screwed up, you screwed up. Well, he told me to go get six and there were only three. What am I supposed to do? That kind of deal. That happens. But the, the ultimate at the end of the day, whether anybody wants to admit or not, and I think Tim might agree, is the dealer is the customer. Let's let's how do we serve the dealer? And that's why I like having Tim on because he's talking about sweet spot. OK, sorry. That's good. Yeah, no, I mean, I get when I, I'd be curious when a um, transporter picks up the uh, the gate releases from his, his guy. Um, what does he say? When can they be there? Right. Isn't that the first thing you have? Or maybe how much per car? I don't know. Oh, not even that. No, you nailed it. When will you have it there? That price is always second, at yeah. least my experience. Yeah. I mean, when can you have it there? And then how much? Right. Based on the first answer, I might be willing to do a little negotiating with number two, which is, is a great example. I've, th I've thought about that. I'm so glad we're having it. Here's what, know your customer. Who's your customer if you're hauling cars? Should be car dealers. What do car dealers do every day, all day, all week, all month, all year? They negotiate. So when you walk in and you start haggling with a car dealer over a price, it's not he hates you and wants you to go away. You have to understand that's what this guy eats, drinks, and sleeps. Negotiate. Am I right, Tim? Oh yeah, they they they'll negotiate with their with their grandma. If they can, you know. It's just... Oh, I, I believe me. <laughs> exactly. And, so and, as um, we go ahead. No, no. It's you know. Listen. Um, just be pre be prepared as a my my advice to transporters today is um, you know I think you got to be honest with guys that's what I was what I wanted you know um, I would be more inclined to deal with the same guy week in and week out if I knew he was going to get my cars there safely when he said they would be there you know in one piece um, and I didn't have a lot of drama you know. Um, so that, I guess that that was my my thought. Ty, so, you, you said it real well. And I want to jump in. So here's the here's the thing is, and this is where we did this show about unicorn transport, 
because every, we want it cheap, we want it fast. What's the other thing? We, and we want the best. Well, mm -hmm. you can't have all three. Well, I can on Amazon. Yeah, and that's part of the problem. And now Carvana and everybody's following, and I don't want to. I'm not here to bash, but we've got this perception problem, and I'm going to go ahead and address it because the perception problem is is that we can get it cheap, we can get it fast, we can get it the best. We got to block melting ice here. That's why we're talking about it so that we understand what's going on. And you just said a key thing: dealer will negotiate with his grandmother. Well, then transporter be that grandmother and negotiate with the dealer. You know, throw in some better advertising. Here's the deal. I get it. You got a block of melting ice. But I can't do it for 35 bucks. No. Okay? No. You know, whatever it is. Well, I say 35 bucks because I've heard recently, really? Ty, you might be able to com confirm this, that in some regions now, you've got large national, like, big box type retailers, again, the Carvana and the CarMax, and the, you know who they are, uh, dictating this low transportation price on their vendors. And, you know, I don't know who's doing it. Probably nobody's doing it now that I said that. But no transporter can move a car for 35 bucks. Mm -hmm. So stop it already. No, no way. <clears throat> yeah, and I, I guess really the, where I was going with this was that you, you, as you... As we as we have these dialogues and, and people are able to see it and watch it, especially carriers, I, I feel like it's not only educational, but it, it may actually even prohibit some guys that don't need to be in this business. And, and Tim's right. Here's the thing. I mean, I've had all for all my life in car hauling. I've had Tim call me. I didn't get I didn't meet Tim on a load board. I didn't meet Tim on whatever. I met Tim because I ran into him either at the auction, the transport parking lot, or the office. Wherever Tim was, that's where I seemed to meet him. So as long as, and Tim's right, as long as I told Tim his cars would be there on Tuesday and they were there on Tuesday, Tim and I got along just fine. If I told Tim they would be there on Tuesday and I didn't get them there till Wednesday, we got a problem. Now, Tim will give me maybe two to four times to correct that. And, and dealers are smart, guys. They, they really are. And they always have backups, right? Well, I'll just go to the next guy. I'll go to the next guy. And one of the things that I think carriers, and especially myself, I'll be honest, you know, I'm like, I got 400 cars to move tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to move them all. Why? Because there's something in my head that makes me think there's not going to be 400 next week. Well, guess how many there were next week? 500. And that's what's weird, I think, from the perspective of, the car hauler guy is that we always think, well, today's the end, the last of it. We're never going to do this again. And that's not true. That's why I say it's, I, I like to call it residual income. And the reason is because car dealers do the same thing every day, every week, every month, every year. And when we really get focused, and this is where I think <clears throat> one of the things I like to talk to Tim about is I'm tradition. Okay, Tim, when you were a buyer, you pretty much hit the same auctions, right? Yeah. For, for a while I was, the same th three, four sales a week yep, for two, three years in a row. Two or three years in a row. Mm -hmm. Same same route, same deal, same people. Yep. And you buy them and they go to the same location, <laughs> right? For the most part, yeah. We, yeah. You know, we, as we grew, we expanded, but, you know. Yeah, yeah, I might add a buyer. You might do something else. <clears throat> but anyway, my, where I was going with this is a, a local dealer. So I tell guys, start in your backyard. Go talk to the dealer where you live. Find out where does he go on a regular basis? Because there used to be, and this is what we're excited to figure out, are things changing so much that dealers don't do the same thing. I think we're all creatures of habit. But as it has, has COVID messed things up so bad now, I don't go to auctions at all, and I buy just anywhere. I th no, I think um, COVID has expanded where dealers are looking for cars. Um, we've talked about this a bunch. I think, yeah, they're going to the auctions, but that's price right. Up. And now Prices you've got up. you've got more onesies and twosies at more remote locations. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to jump back on price because I gave my speech, but the communication and the technology can help us in this area because mm -hmm. if you can get information faster about the moves that need to be made, right now you can cut into that melting block of ice without having affected price. Yeah, you know, and 
I know from from your perspective, Ty, or the, the transporter side, it's a pain in the ass to have to move one car from a sale for a guy. And if I'm running a big truck, like those trucks are in that lot right now. It's expensive. I I get that. And any car dealer who tells you he doesn't get that, he's lying to you. He knows. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And I, I think um, <clears throat> it's it's fun because uh, we had Jay had on Tuesday night's show. He had Anthony Munter. I know you know him, driver. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's he's talking some stuff. And by the way, he mentioned a company that I know you're close to and uh, <clears throat> that I'm thinking, man, this could be interesting to see this part of the equation come together. Meaning, you know, if you listen to Anthony for a few minutes, this guy is on it. Dude. This AI stuff he's got. I don't know if you've seen it, but it is crazy. Well, I'm not familiar with what he's doing, but I know that a lot of businesses are looking at non-traditional i call it non-traditional data you know non-traditional data yeah to help make decisions and drive your business and i you know it's only a matter of time where it starts to hit your side it probably is already oh yeah definitely but it's cool to see it because it really resembles what you know i'm a lane guy you know maybe have two or three lanes from here to here to here and and you can dominate that and yeah. you, you can make it scalable and you can kind of even predict it. And uh, as things change, if I were in that situation where I had those trucks, I might be a little more concerned, but maybe not. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And I guess what I'm thinking is, is <clears throat> it's fun to talk to a guy like Anthony to see what he's doing, because it really resembles this, what you're talking about, this block of ice. Let's, let's get this stuff moved. How do we get it moved? How fast do we get it moved? What's the cost? And that's where I think, again, it's, it's, it's fun to have these conversations with you guys. So we, we have I really a few, do appreciate it. I do, too. We have a few more minutes. I want to point this out. I want to bring this up. Uh, this, is, um, this is something I saw online. This is our friend Sky Hallman. Can you see the screen okay? Yep. Over at One Auction View. Okay. He's got Mr. Monkey there. Okay. So he was talking about how he was, uh, he was at the grocery store. And uh, realizing, you know, he's got a shopping list, of course. Why not have a shopping list for cars that I need to buy for my dealership? Now, I don't know whether or not uh, digital auction software also allows you to have a shopping list. I I mean, I would think. We do. Right. Okay, there we go. I encourage the same behavior. Exactly. And the point of bringing this up is this, again, points to we're all, I think, at the same time, having similar awakenings of how to use technology to our advantage. Because one of the things we had talked about is, like with Sky, if you're going to have that digital auction software, do you have accurate transport pricing in the software so that you, as you're buying that car, you know what it's really going to cost to transport it? Stop guessing. Why are you guessing? Why are we still guessing? I can find out the shipping price before I buy on eBay. Is that so? I apologize. Is that not in current software? I mean, just hey, man, this is auto transport. This is uh, we are still we're still chipping away at the Stone Age. We still have people fighting about whether you know you need a dispatcher or whatever. Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. no, I don't live the 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 daily you know life of clicking in on Stockwave or simulcast, but. I imagine you got to know if I'm if I'm bidding this morning in Dallas and I'm headed out to bid in San Diego this afternoon <laughs> that my transport cost goes up. I guess how much? But somebody's just doing it. I think it's just a scratch pad as you're driving down the highway and stuff's blowing out the window. I'm pretty sure that's yeah. how we do it. Is that I'm curious? Is that <laughs> I mean, is it's that funny and transport? it's not? I, yeah, that's and here here's the proof. The proof is in the pudding, and the pudding is this. I watch every event webinar even the cox 10 day event 10 days of information is there anything about transportation no we said we would <laughs> i know we said we wouldn't talk about it listen i'm i'm listen but i'm pointing something out it's yeah. time to talk about it we're going to start Absolutely. talking about it i think i can help yeah. let me know how i can help we got to talk about transportation costs we can't just continue to ignore it or Make it somebody else's, yeah. you know, problem. Yeah, and and I, I mean, I'm just the dealer side. I know for that there's other opportunities to haul cars. For you guys, that you know, there's retail customers, there's fleets, there's OEMs. I mean, there's all sorts of avenues to find cars to haul. You know, so 
I'm By the way, you, I, I said like it. You, you I didn't. Like Tim. And it, 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 we're gonna we're gonna get there, man. We're gonna get there. And well, and I've listen. Mm -hmm. I've thrown out a couple names, but I do that because we know that. I'll tell you what. I'll flip the coin. You think a lot of car haulers? They don't think that Carvana is in car hauling. <laughs> Newsflash: oh. Carvana is totally in car hauling. Yeah. I mean, from you know, flatbed to nine car all day long. I I work with a group up in the mid, upper Midwest, they have their own car hauler. They just started with their first one. You know, I, wow. There's a reason. There's That's a reason. right. Why did they get into auto transport? Yeah. What's the yeah. reason? And there's the a thing reason. is, and they're going to train this person to do more than haul cars for them. You know, and then this is just a guy, he's, he's going to go pick up cars that they buy at people's houses. You know, I talk about the last mile a lot. Um, but, you know, if they could get that person to do more than just drive for them, you know, be a face of the company, it, then, it lowers their cost. And there's so you know this is not. Here's the thing: is auto transport has to own this problem. Mm -hmm. There's been so much arguing amongst each other. Yeah, you know what? These professional companies are going to go figure it out without you. So how's that feel? <clears throat> yeah, and I, Jay, I hate to interrupt you, but I'm going to tell you the, the the logic behind this is exactly what Tim's talking about. This block of ice, and I, I really think. <clears throat> You see a, a big company, a, an independent dealer that has a truck and trailer, whatever size, one car to nine cars, there's a reason they have that. And it's most generally because they need to get the job done and can't find the guy to do the job because he's never around. And I think, you know, whether it's Final Mile, whether it's My World, which is auction to dealer stuff, I, I really think that as, as we have these conversations you know you're going to have different light get shed in different areas corners if you will and one of those is definitely the carrier the carrier <clears throat> needs to up the game you know uh, and i'm not trying to be mean but we, and, we've kind of got a rough reputation well doing the job is hard and it has a cost attached to it so that's <clears throat> one area that we need to talk about but the 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 uh the verticalization and fragmentation that we all know exists. Carriers won't talk to brokers. Brokers won't talk to blah, blah, blah. Brokers do talk to dealers. So there's a lot to talk about. And that's why I'm excited. I'll tell you what. Seriously, Tim, if we do this every month, if we do this every Friday, we are not only talking about the block of ice, we're going to start chipping away at it. Ooh, look at you. Whoa. Metaphors are just flying around in that head, aren't they, Jay? <laughs> I'm getting excited, you know, because it's this yeah, is the great. Snow cone machine this before is it's over. great. Damn. It's time to put transportation. Actually, we saw this Tuesday night. I think that's the little bit of the fire I got is off Tuesday night. We had big fixed ops, two fixed mm -hmm. ops directors on the show, and we we're talking about how fixed ops and transportation are both coming to the table, right? Because dealer sales. Man, you could fill an entire arena with NADA, dealer sales, rah, rah, whatever, right? But you get fixed stops and transportation, not as exciting. Well, we're in the room now, and we're going to keep talking. Yeah. And that's why uh, that Teddings fixed ops roundtable.com thing's awesome. Yeah, the fixed the fixed stop side of this whole business is... Um, so a I got a, just a quick question for you, Tim, before we let you go. What, what do you... What do you what do you go after? What do you need in life besides whatever? But as far as your job every day, what do, what do you, what do you, what's your goal for today or tomorrow? Does that make any sense? Well, so, um, you know, my job every day is to connect with my, my dealers. I try and start from the, the, the top, you know, the decision makers, the guys who ultimately sign the checks to make sure we're giving them the support they need from the, the software side. But, you know, if I, I know when I call them at the beginning of the next week after the month's over and they said they had a good month, that makes me happy. You That's know? what you, you need good months. Yeah. So I, need, I, yeah. One of the things I hear like Paul and uh, our other Paul, we've got two Pauls, but Paul, Mer Paul Meyer and Paul Machine, I hear both of them use the word process quite a bit. Do you use that word as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was in my, one of my slides there is sales oh. process. Recon process, online process, yeah. people, Which is the process, process is the products, the three P's. Say that again, I'm sorry. There's three P's in a, to, make, to a successful car dealership in my world. People, process, and product. 
people, process, product. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, I like that because one of the things I try to do is I try to tell car car hauler guys, look at your customer and try to emulate your customer. Yeah. You know, that also who you hang around with really totally. impacts your life. Absolutely. <clears throat> So by listening to you guys, and, and I keep hearing this process keep coming up, and I'm like, what kind of a process does a, a car hauler, new guy, or even a big guy with a lot of trucks, yeah. what is their process? You know, And I live in the used car space, and the used car space, as you know, it's, it's kind of like this on a regular basis, right? Mm -hmm. Whoa, whoa, a lot of highs, a lot of lows, not a lot of level, but... Is that changing too, or is are you seeing more level, or is it still kind of? No, it's it, uh, it's certainly changed. And twenty twenty changed a lot. It was um, it was very V shaped. We were high, then we dropped, and we came back up. Um, we've been on a slow downward trend here. I I think it's going to pop back up a little bit, but that's where process comes in to try and level off the highs and the lows. You know, is is you go back and say, am I doing the basic blocking and tackling? My and yeah. Pro and process too is um, I never try and mess too much with people's with the price um, of a car and, and it, it, at least I don't start there and that's like the same thing I think on the hauler side it's like why go to the guy's rate you know right away well you know can you ensure me my cars are going to get there on time safely consistently um, you know everybody pays a lot of money for an iPhone why I you know I'm sure you know if you can show value um in your pro in your service people probably yeah. willing to pay a little bit more well and I, it's one of the things i tell a lot of guys is you're not gonna just walk in and that guy's gonna start paying you what you want <clears throat> you need to prove yourself yeah and, it, and i think there's this kind of this mentality because we we have these what we call load boards and yeah. you know if there's a rate on a load board well you're not really dealing with a, a, a person direct it's here it is take it or leave it well, if I, if I meet Tim and Tim and I, you know, we get along, whatever the case may be, he's going to, he's going to test me. He's going to make sure that I'm reliable, that I'm dependable, that I've got insurance, that I know what the heck I'm doing. I mean, and that's, that's how you build relationships. You, when you go, when you meet your girlfriend or whatever, soon to be wife, I don't know how it works, but however that process is, you just don't walk in and I get everything I want. Yeah. yeah. No, spot on. So anyway, I don't know where we're at on time. Jay, how are we? Well, we're over time, but it's been an awesome show. I mean, we covered a lot of ground. We raised a lot of issues. I think we, we've we properly tilled the soil to grow wonderful fruit in the future. It looks like you got some good topics here in the, in the chat, too. So Got some live chat going on. Yeah, yeah, and I know, and guys, and I apologize that I haven't addressed the live chat specifically I really wanted to give Tim the floor. Oh. Um, if you know, if we can do some follow-ups, um, I think actually Ty, I think you've got some homework in the live chat, which is great because Tuesday night we're going to have our next roundtable with carriers, and so that's going to be great too. But Tim, I saw that, so I'll make yeah. sure I get that invite. I Please, definitely yeah. want to see that. That's that is, awesome. it, and I'll tell you what, you know, the last roundtable we did live that was a big show. Yeah, I think this is going to be another big Tuesday. It's Groundhog's yeah. roundtable. So. Cool. Tim, thank you so much for hey, your time today. That you was guys. amazing. And, you know, I'm sure we'll see each other again soon. Yes. Hey, Ty, get, Thanks, out, Tim. get out of the lot, man. It's freezing out there. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going back out. Don't worry. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. All right. Take, take care, care Tim. See you, man. All right. And let's see here. Okay. So, Tim has left. So, what we'll do is um, we'll just got, kind of give an ending synopsis while you're headed back to the car. Um, Ty, that was a great show and once again you know on a regular basis you only know, schedule things and then it continues to exceed my expectations i love talking to him and um i think the time is amazing what's doing? going on hey jackson right wait wait oh it's yep. blake ah that's wait. blake okay Pierce and blake we're brothers have a good one man um What'd you say? uh we're I talking about the show thought. expectations. Yeah. It turned out all right. <laughs> it turned out it was great. It was great. We didn't even get to everything we could have possibly got to. Um, and I just want to say too, listen, if this if this show, you know, like what is this show? You know, we are connecting dealers, auctions, and carriers. We were talking to a dealer. Ty was Ty is at the auction, and Ty represents the carriers. And if you have questions, 
I saw some stuff in the live chat. If you got follow-up questions, I want you to talk to Ty. That's really the best thing you can do is go get signed up on Auto Transport Intel uh, and get in touch with Ty. Get the weekly email blasts. And listen, if you're if you're working on growing your business, I saw in the live chat. Um, let's go back up here. Jay Renfro, can you make money with a fresh authority semi and five car Sun Country? Jay, you are perfect to join the Tuesday night roundtable and ask questions. That that's what Tuesday night is all about. And you're not alone. You know, it's not me and you and Ty and we're sitting there staring at you, laughing at you. No. No, there's going to be over a dozen people just like you with questions trying to grow their business and everybody's got a different situation. Ty. Yeah, it is a different situation. And, you know, I, you and I had this conversation before we went live today and I I like to talk about it because there, really there's not a lot of easy about this business. You know, whether you try to do it, you know, a tie approach, which is go make relationships, go have dealers, talk to dealers. Have them call you when they have cars. If you maybe that's not for you. Maybe you're doing the load board. And I think you know, okay, load board, great, but uh, it's still not easy, and it still requires a lot of cash. And if you really want to be in it, it's probably a good idea to, <clears throat> as you're, you know, can I make money? Yeah, you can make money. It's just how do you do that, right? Is do you get on the load board? Do you have? I ran into a guy this week. He's Got, you know, he's paying a dispatcher and uh, that's 8% of every dollar, right? Out the window. So knowing your costs, knowing your expenses, it's, it's a little bit more than just driving down the road is what I'm trying to say. It's a little bit more than F the man, right? <laughs> I mean, I, I've talked to enough of you guys. I know, yeah. you know, I'm tired of working for this guy. I, I hate know. this guy. He treats me like, you know, and I understand that. So going out and doing your own thing is a great idea. But I just need you to understand it requires a tremendous amount of determination, tremendous amount of work, long hours, long days, and a lot of heartache. I mean, just being honest, I've done it for 20 years. I got a lot of sad stories. At the same time, Family. It's, it's been an amazing business and I've done incredibly well and it's provided me a, a great life. So I can say one thing and I can say the other thing. Sorry, I tried to get out of the wind. <laughs> uh, try to get. Uh, I can say one thing and the other thing, but they're both true. I have been blessed. It has been good, but it's been a. a you know, it's, it takes a lot of work, and it, it doesn't matter if you're mowing lawns. You, you got to go to work, right? <laughs> well, and as far as f the man, because we all know, you know, I think we all have that in us. We're you know we're human yeah. beings. Um, at some point, sooner or later, uh. The DOT and the FMCSA is the man, and it's hard to say F to them. So no matter where you go, my point is this. No matter where you go, there is – the man is there. Yeah. So don't and be you know, thinking even, that you – you know, right, yeah. you didn't just join the, the, the lone wolf club. Yeah. <laughs> but that's I, – I like what we're doing here, Jay. I really yeah. do. I, you know, I always say it, I appreciate what you've done, how you put this show together. We're – we're learning just like you guys are. We don't Amen. have all the answers. We're one of the things we're trying to do is, you know, what is the, what is max digital and what, how does that work? And really, what does that have to do with me? Yeah. Well, it has a lot, you know, just what, if you listen, you, go ahead. And well, that's the thing is that, and that's why I brought up, I know, I, you know, I, by bringing up other company names, you know, but I got to be specific. Otherwise we don't know what we're talking about. There's this tension about, reaching out across the aisle oh my gosh i don't know i'm a dealer can i talk to transportation you know what dang it we're going to and that's why max digital's on the show having tim on the show proves that we need to do this because he had questions about you know our business we had questions about his business let's talk dude yeah and it, it is important and there's it's it's just good again I, thanks for for what you do, Jay. Thanks for putting this together. It does mean, it means a lot to me. And I think, it, you know, we're, we're, we're definitely, I know I talk to a lot of your viewers and I know that I've helped a lot of guys, uh, tried to, and maybe even <laughs> saved a couple along the way. I don't know. I, you, but, you are saving souls. I know it. So thank you for well, thank that. You. <laughs> thank well, you. Anyway, have a good weekend. You guys got my number. 
uh, round table Tuesday night. That's going to be a good one. You need to tune in if you can definitely watch on demand later. Uh, you know, the whole subscribe and like stuff that's important as well. Um, and anything else we can do for you, let us know. We'd be happy to try it. Yes. Thank you, Ty. Be safe. Stay warm. And thanks for everything you do. And yeah, so you got to finish up that list because Tuesday night's going to be big. I'm on it. Okay, I'm man. I'm on it. All right. I'll talk to you later, man. See you, dude. Bye. All right, guys. I let Ty go. Um, he's done for the day. No, he's not. I'm, and I'm not done for the day either. Um, you know, I do these shows and then I gotta get them ready. And, you know, you know that if you go back to past shows, you can click on time codes, jump to sections in the video, get information. And so I work on that. I'm always working on the next show or the past show, or am I live on camera that right now? Four times a week, auto transport Intel. This is show four of four for the week. That means Live shows are done for the week. Um, here's what's happening. Tuesday night is Groundhog's Roundtable. We are going to have a car hauling roundtable live. Mostly newbies, new carriers, new businesses, some brokers, some dispatchers, mostly carriers. Um, and we're gonna be we're gonna be live. We're gonna be talking. We're gonna have our meeting live on the channel. So if you want to be on the meeting, let me know. Send me an email. Auto transport intel at gmail.com or just watch or skip it <laughs> it doesn't matter because we're not going away we're just going to keep doing this and we're going to keep connecting the verticals there's been a lot of resistance to connecting the verticals and i'm tired of it we're going to connect them because we need to we need to talk we need to be connected or we're, we're gonna man when doesn't that freak you out when you hear that a dealer just went ahead and you know what they're gonna they're just gonna get into transport Really? They can't find somebody that they can rely on to be their transporter? That's that's not good. That is not good. And when the like big box companies again, they didn't outsource it. They they're building their own in house transport network. Really? Oh my gosh. That should not that's not that should not be happening. I mean, I'm not saying there's not a time and a place for in house, but it's happening a lot more than I think we realize. So we want to learn how to be that great sub hauler, advertise, negotiate, communicate, etc., and be on the technology platform. Don't be left out in the cold wondering what happened. This is Auto Transport Intel. It's the Car Shipping Business Channel. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you next week. Stay safe. I'll see you soon.